What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some Destiny 2 news. And so in the video today, Bungie confirmed that their servers are being DDoSed. And they say this is the primary reason that we've been receiving so many error codes in the game. So we'll talk about what Bungie have said there. It's causing some pretty major disruption. But additionally, they offer more updates on weapon crafting glitches. According to Bungie, there are still some ongoing issues with that, despite the primary fix for it. So they're still working on some of that. And otherwise, we'll round up some of the updates from this week. I have been away from home. So we've missed a couple of news updates. And we'll round some of those up as extras in the videos. So as always, guys, I hope you enjoy this one and find it useful. If you do, get subscribed to the channel and I'll keep you posted with more content, but otherwise, let's get into it. And so firstly, over the past week or so, there have been some major server issues with Destiny 2 and a lot of players have been receiving error codes. Obviously, these can be pretty frustrating, whether you're getting kicked out of content, can't log into the game, and so on. It is pretty frustrating, especially when it's sort of ongoing continuously. But Bungie have offered an update and they've said, over the past couple of days, we've seen a spike in error codes and disconnects. The team has confirmed that these error codes are not related to the planned fixes rolling out for recent crafting issues and instead are a result of DDoS attacks. While we typically don't confirm these types of attacks and don't plan to in future for general game security reasons, we believe it's the right thing to do for our players to communicate the added pressure to our systems given the recent circumstances. We want to thank our players for their patience as teams work swiftly to ensure the integrity of the game and continue to implement our roadmap for future stability improvements. Now these error codes have still been ongoing over the course of this weekend so far. They do primarily appear to be happening at sort of peak times for the game, and normally the community would kind of write this off as Bungie just having bad servers, but it's interesting that they've confirmed someone is actually DDoSing Bungie services specifically in a very targeted attack, which of course affects the stability of Destiny. So as far as we know right now, these are continuing to happen on a daily basis. And so obviously Bungie are chasing this down and trying to get the issue resolved. And there we have confirmation that the vast majority of these error codes are actually being caused by DDoS attacks directly at Bungie servers. So obviously as a community, it's pretty frustrating because someone or a group of individuals are actually making the game more difficult to enjoy. So whoever's doing it, please, could I kindly ask you to stop being a even worse, though, of course, is that if Bungie finds out who has been doing this, it does actually qualify as a cybercrime. So we've seen what Bungie have done previously when employees have been harassed or other folks have attacked their services, and also the ongoing legal battles that Bungie have had with cheat makers. While it does take time to resolve these issues, Bungie tends to come down pretty hard when they're able to identify individuals causing these problems. So pretty annoying stuff. I'm sure Bungie are continuing to work on it, but in the short term, we can probably expect to continue to see these error codes at peak time specifically, which either means that the folks who are doing this are doing it at a specific point in time when they come home from work or something like that, or they're intentionally doing it at peak times just to make the experience even worse for the vast majority of the player base. So hopefully it's something Bungie can get on top of and give us your thoughts down in the comment section. In other news right here though, following the update on Thursday, Bungie have said the issue with crafting weapons has been resolved and illegitimate frames and perks on crafted weapons have been replaced by legitimate ones. Please be advised that any players attempt to utilize the previous crafting exploit will receive a weasel error code and be kicked to the login screen. So that's an intentional error code right there and is one of the Bungie's short-term methods of blocking the crafting bug. Although they did update again and said we're still working on edge cases regarding the weapon crafting exploit. So as a temporary measure, they've disabled the option to reshape enhanced raid adept weapons to prevent exploiting weapon rolls and this will be addressed in a future update. So there are a few much rarer bugs still associated with the weapon crafting glitch Obviously, there was a way that players could take advantage of enhanced raid adept weapons, specifically when reshaping them. But otherwise, on the most part, the bug is over. It's done. It's gone. What a crazy week it was while it was a thing, though. A couple of other quick updates here, though, from Bungie. And in the twab the other day, they confirmed that Thorn will be getting a catalyst in Season 23. And they said Thorn is arguably one of the most iconic hand cannons in Destiny, so it makes sense that this bad boy is the next weapon up for some catalyst action for Season 23. Unfortunately, you can't stab people with it, like you can with Monte Carlo, but in terms of the bonus that that catalyst grants, we can see it grants bonus range and stability, and dealing a final blow or absorbing a remnant grants additional increased weapon range, as well as an increased mobility and handling stat for a short time. And we can see the range bump on the stats right there that this thing gets, so not really a flashy catalyst, not quite like Monte Carlo, but with the range stat being really important, it is fundamentally going to improve the weapon quite substantially. So let us know if you're looking forward to getting that catalyst for Thorn. And Bungie also outlined that starting for Season 23, weapons will have what they're calling deterministic recoil. So that'll include auto rifles, pulse rifles, scouts, 
SMGs, sidearms, hand cannons, trace rifles, and machine guns. And they added includes all full auto weapons as well as burst fire and semi-automatic primary weapons. And these weapons will recoil in a predictable way with sustained fire, allowing players to learn the patterns and compensate for them. Players may have seen systems similar to this in other games, but our implementation is quite different because we release so many weapons per season and drive their gameplay via stats. Importantly in this case, that is recoil direction and stability. And the goal of the system is to make each weapon and feel unique, with a recoil pattern that could be learned to a degree, and this will enable players to truly master weapons in a way that wasn't possible with standard D2 recoil, which has a fair amount of randomness in it. And the same note that the pattern of the updated recoil is very similar each time, but not exactly the same. And so a weapon will be set up with a few possible recoil patterns. The weapon will always start with the first pattern, and most of the time it will run through this recoil pattern until you stop firing for long enough to let the weapon's recoil and accuracy reset completely, but occasionally, Somewhere in the first half of the magazine, it will switch to another pattern. And each bullet fired has a small amount of randomness to it due to the accuracy cone, placing the bullets somewhere in a radius around the target point. The entire pattern shifts left and right depending on the weapon's recoil, and higher recoil direction having smaller horizontal spacing. But even as recoil direction stat changes, the pattern will still be recognizable. And so they show a clip right here of the Abyss Defiant, and you can see they fire it three times without controlling the recoil. And while those patterns aren't identical every Every time, they are very similar to each other, with a bit of variation included. And the point out that Abyss Defiant here has 86 recoil and 25 stability, firing with no compensation. And while there is some randomness to the location of each specific bullet impact, the pattern is generally the same. And so in short, they're going to be making recoil more predictable moving forward. And they confirm it will reset when you stop firing for long enough for the weapon to fully settle. Typically when you reload, the weapon is idle for long enough for this to happen. But in terms of what happens if we keep refilling the magazine while continuously firing. Of course, certain perks can do that. And they say the implementation they've used has no upper limit to the length of the recoil pattern. For example, firing an auto rifle with Actium Warrig or another magazine refill method won't cause any weirdness. And they also say they focused on security implications for the feature. And they've added a server-side flag to disable it if they encounter any issues. So going to be interesting to see that introduced to the game. And I think especially for console players, it is going to make the recoil of certain weapons more predictable, more manageable and like they said, more learnable. So give us your thoughts about that guys, but for today, that does it for the quick update right here. Just a few items I wanted to round up and talk about this weekend now that I'm back at home. So share any thoughts you have in the comments section, but if you found the video useful today, a rating below really does help us out on the channel. Also be sure to get subscribed so I can keep you posted with more Destiny content. But otherwise, as always, I appreciate you tuning in and I hope you guys have an awesome day.